Welcome to this week's Movie Math, giving you an in-depth analysis of the box office for the weekend of October 28th, when Puss needed those boots to wade through a snowstorm on the East Coast. Yes, most audiences were snowed in on Saturday, resulting in a weaker-than-expected haul for the feline hero. Puss in Boots opened at number one with $34 million, just barely putting it in league with this year's other mid-range animated flicks, Rio and Rango. And the last thing Jeffrey Katzenberg wanted to hear was mid-range. Obviously, Puss should have fared a little better, as it's the spin-off of the successful Shrek franchise, which has always done Bafo box office biz. Hey, even a decade ago, the original Shrek managed a bigger debut. Thus, Katzenberg's detractors, a polite word for enemies, smiled with glee as DreamWorks Animation posted its lowest open since 2007's B-Movie. Even How to Train Your Dragon opened bigger, and that opening caused DreamWorks Animation stock to plummet until the movie ended up having some major dragon legs. And while Puss might have nine lives, his movie only has two weekends, until Happy Feet 2 hits theaters, quickly followed by Arthur Christmas, Hugo, The Muppets, Alvin and the Chipmunks 3, and The Adventures of Tintin. It's going to be a family movie bloodbath. Puss did manage to get away with a few trinkets of good news, though, such as setting a Halloween weekend record and scoring big with the Latino audience. In fact, of the ten theaters nationwide where the movie did the best, four were in Miami. I have to say that personally I wasn't expecting much from Puss in Boots, but I fell in love with the movie Sunday night. And while I'm growing tired of Pixar's make you cry and rip your heart out formula, I'm always impressed by DreamWorks Animation's clever scripts and impressive action sequences. Maybe this movie will also be saved by word of mouth, but then again, maybe DreamWorks Animation wouldn't have to always rely on word of mouth if their marketing department did their jobs. Elsewhere in the box office, Paranormal Activity slipped 65% from its opening weekend, but Paramount continues to get scarily good returns on their $5 million investment. Then in third place was the debut of In Time with just $12 million. That's pretty weak and considerably less than the openings of Justin Timberlake's summer picks. Forget sexy, he better start focusing on bringing audiences back. This is a career best for Andrew Nichol, though, reminding all rising stars that it's worth the few minutes it takes to check out the box office stats of whichever director you're thinking of trusting with your career. As for Johnny Depp, he was bested by a younger man in shades and hair gel as Footloose in its third weekend still beat out The Rum Diary's debut. Yep, $5.1 million for The Rum Diary, the box office equivalent of one of those miniatures featured so heavily in the movie. And while this is just a fly on the giant windshield of Johnny Depp's Pirates Mobile, it's more bad news for Amber Heard, whose TV gig was the fall season's first casualty. As for Aaron Eckhart, well, he's two-faced, so he's golden. As for the remainder of the box office, movies did their best to hold on. Real Steel dropped 56 percent, The Three Musketeers 60 percent, and both The Ides of March and Moneyball in the 40 percentile. Courageous fell just 26 percent, but is still unlikely to match Fireproof's haul from back in 2008. Both religiously themed movies are from the same production company. In the limited release sector, Anonymous had just under a 4,000 per theater average, meaning that could be all she wrote for the Shakespeare conspiracy pick. Meanwhile, like crazy mirrored Martha Marcy May Marlene's 30K-ish per theater average from last weekend, while the latter expanded its theater count to surge 75 percent. Margin Call also expanded and boasted a 28 percent increase. None of these movies are serious awards contenders, but it shows that the art house crowd is beginning to emerge for the season. And that's the Weekend Box Office Roundup. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.